Leah is passionate uh, about parks, uh, believing wholeheartedly that, quote, it starts in parks. They're here to she's here to discuss the upcoming bond issue on the March 17th ballot. Please join me in welcoming Leah Rock. Okay, so, um, good afternoon, it is afternoon. Thank you for a wonderful lunch, and thank you for inviting me. Uh, I did start 22 years ago with the city of West Palm Beach, and that was in 1970, no, sorry, 19, 1998. So in 1997, a little history, before I got to the city, um, the city had a strategic recreation plan that they went out to the community, got a lot of information, and put a plan in place. So with that plan in 1997, they had grand ideas of what our park system could look like. So not to put that plan on the shelf, in 2000, they went out for a bond referendum. And the bond referendum was 20 million for 20 years. So all those designs and plans from the recreation strategic plan became a reality. So, 20 years later, we're in 2020, and the bond from 2000 is about to sunset. So in 2015, to go back a little bit, we needed a new Parks and Recreation Master Plan. So we went out to the community again, got a lot of feedback from everybody, and we have this great new plan that's on the shelf. Well, we don't want it to sit on a shelf. Isn't that the worst thing to do is to create a master plan and not work the plan? So in order to work that plan, we had to find the money. And the recommendation as a part of the plan was when the 2000 bond was to sunset, don't let it sunset, renew it. So with the renewal of the 2000 bond in 2020, what it would mean to you guys is if you pay taxes in the city of West Palm Beach, your millage will stay the same. We're not increasing your tax mills. They would stay exactly the same as they currently are. But we would be fortunate enough to have up to $30 million with a repay of 30 years. So that's our big ask. But what's really important is that um, we have over $30 million worth of projects that we put together a list, which you can find on our website and uh, you can see what parks in particular are on that list. And I know Kiwanis has a park in particular that they're interested in, and that's a playground on the waterfront. I know this has been a discussion for a long time, so as a part of the parks bond, we've put a little money aside in that parks bond to make that Kiwanis playground a reality, because we have to do some additional stuff in order for the location on the waterfront for it to go, your money plus our money will make a fabulous location for the Kiwanis Playground. But I want to take a step back. So that master plan that's sitting on the shelf, it's not sitting on the shelf. We're actually working it. In 2016, there was a parks, public works bond that went out. And from that public works bond, the Parks and Recreation Department got about $8 million. So we have been really busy out putting in new playgrounds, new pavilions, new fitness equipment, uh, resurfacing tennis courts, working on um, basketball courts, new lighting. So we have a lot of things that we're working on, but we have a long way to go. So um, what this plan, the details of the plan are very simple, and they're right here by your, uh, by your plates. So important to know, that it's dedicated funding just for parks. The police department, the fire department, public works, they can't take away these dollars from our park improvements. Uh, new and modern equipment. I don't know if you know anything about play today, but the way kids play today, way different than when we were kids in playgrounds. Uh, they like to be um, warriors. You know all those warrior shows on TV? They like to do the climbing and the agility and all that other stuff. We wanted to drive the boat or the car. Or they, their brains work differently than ours did back, back when I was playing in playgrounds. Uh, we're gonna improve some of our community centers. So our community centers were built in the 70s. At Gaines Park, Pleasant City, and Howard Park was built in the 60s. 
So though we have penny sales tax for some of those improvements, it's not quite enough to get us to where we need to be. So the parks bond will help with that. In addition, crazy, I don't know why, but years ago, um, before Leah, some of the playgrounds and pavilions and amenities in our parks were built without sidewalks taking you to the park. So you would walk through the grass to get to that amenity. Well, um, American with Disabilities Act says, what? You can't do that. Well, we have to make all of our play spaces accessible for everyone. So we'll be adding all accessibility to all of our park amenities within our parks. Better lighting, more efficient lighting, um, LED lighting. Some of our lighting at Howard Park Tennis Center in particular is from the 70s. We can't even get the parts anymore. So we have to replace it with new, up-to-date, high quality, um, good quality lighting. And really important, there will be bond oversight. Everybody keeps asking, how, do you, how are we gonna know that the money's being spelt, spent correctly? Well, we're gonna have several layers. We're going to have independent audit. So there's two different levels of independent audit that we're going to have of this money. One is the city has internal auditors that report directly to our city commissioners. Not to me, not to the city administrator, but to our um, city commissioners. So the internal audit will keep an eye on how the money is being set, spent. Secondly, our finance department has an, has an outside auditor that comes in every year and audits the books and certain programs. And this is one of the programs that they will also audit to make sure that we are just spending the money on parks improvements. Again, not roads, not police, not fire, just our parks. And then uh, community oversight. Citizen oversight. We have a Parks and Rec Advisory Committee that are in full support of this bond, and they will be making sure that the projects that we select to do the renovations for are the right projects for the community. And we'll be going out to the community to make sure that those are the right projects and the right renovations. So we're really excited um, about the possibility of having this bond uh, passed. But it's up to you, the voters, on March 17th to go out and vote. Um, it's up to you. So you guys make the decision. We're just making the ask. And uh, if you want fabulous parks in the city of West Palm Beach, they say that great cities have great parks. But actually, the real saying is great parks make great cities. And it starts in parks. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to ask, answer them. Does the uh, golf course come under your purview? It does not. <laughs> but I'd be happy to meet with you after to give you what little bit I know about it. In the back. Can you tell me, in terms of the fortune of South Island Park, which we appreciate for kids, mm -hmm. but the problem is they're not policing it so much of the time, and they come in there on Sunday and it's raining, they wreck it. The field. Is, is, is there an answer? And we've called the police in the past, but yeah. no, we're too busy to deal with that. But is there somebody in your office you could call if they're doing that? Absolutely. Um, we do have park monitors that, that on the weekends that drive around, but we, as, we have 55 parks, so they may not be in that area when that's going on. But um, you can call our, the 822-2222 number, and they can get in touch with the park monitors to get them out there. And we also just added something to um, our park system. We have uh, park ambassadors, they're security guards that are driving around to our key park. South Olive is one of those parks. And we do have pictures of those guys leaving the park after they were out there playing in the rain, I think it was two weekends ago. So we're, we're working, we are working on that. Yes. Um, I live in the north end of the city. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about what this bond, what, what you have slated for Curry Park in terms of you know, funding from this bond issue? So Curry Park, many of you know, Curry Park is on the waterfront. It's on the north end of the city. It's a beautiful open green space. There's some pavilions there, our only boat ramps. Um, the MLK uh, Memorial is there, as well as some fishing piers and a big open field. It's a beautiful space. So this park needs to be master planned with the community. And we're working on um, a contract with well, we went out to bid a long time ago. We, we hired a firm to do a master plan, 
It was way outside of our scope of what we could possibly do. So we're, we're looking at going to the second party, which is a local firm, to work with us to do the public engagement to do the master plan for Curry Park. The bond itself has earmarked um, $8 million to do just the construction work of the renovations that the community decides that they want. The CRA will pay for actually the design of the plan of what it's going to look like. Yes? For, uh, for long time West Palm Beach residents yes. such as me, um, I was a little sad when you tore down uh, South Olive, which uh, has a lot more memories for me that anybody knows about, probably. Yes. But um, <laughs> my question, I know what a rat hole it was. Yes. And, but I would like to know what's going in in its place and if that is in this bond issue or that's something that has already been funded. So the new South Olive Tennis Center Clubhouse building, it is already funded. It was funded through the public works bond as well as funding from um, uh, housing and community development through a C community development block grant mm -hmm. funding. So it's already funded. The design should be at 100% by the end of this month. We were told it'll be done within two weeks, we hope. Uh, it will be going out to bid and we hope to break ground in September for the new uh, building there. Yes. I live out west and rather close to either a poxy or a poe park, however you want to pronounce it, on the dog road, uh, which closes at 6 p.m. <laughs> Much too early for anybody to really enjoy it who actually works. Um, <laughs> the, the, the nicest time of day is from 6 o'clock to sunset, you know, for the vast majority of the year. Is there a way that the park can be open until sunset? Um, we pronounce it a Poey Park. I okay. guess that's the Indian pronunciation. Okay. Uh, I will certainly address that with the Grassy Waters team. They fall under public utilities, okay. but because it is such a fabulous recreation amenity for the city, I'll certainly express your concerns and your wishes. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? We're really excited about this opportunity. I mean, we did a lot of renovations back in 2003, 2004, 2005. And then of course, many of you know, we had Francis, Dreen, and Wilma that came through. So a lot of the work that we did got a little, um, got beat up a bit from, from those hurricanes. So this will really give us a chance to make our parks absolutely sparkle. We have beautiful parks, beautiful amenities. It's just playgrounds don't last forever. We put them in in 2003, 2004. It's time for them to be replaced. So are our pavilions and other amenities. So we're really hoping that you come out, you be heard, and you come out March 17th and um, let us know what you think.